Joe Linda at 1,200 metres to go. And Oliver had Showella in front. Cassidy going closer on the outside on Freemason. Two lengths to tie the knot. He's never been this close in his life. Three quarters back, Arena and one away. Oliver Twist fifth. A length and a half to Vitra Knight. Rebel on the inside and streak at the tail as they come down the side. No action at the moment. Still Showella made the play. And with 8.50 to go, Showella a long neck in front of the three-year-old Freemason. Two lengths, Arena. He's going up outside. Tie the knot to put him in a firm pocket. Two lengths, Oliver Twist. Vitra Knight. Then came Rebel and last of all is Streak. 600 metres to go. Showella in front being nursed by Oliver before the bend. He'll have to click her up shortly. Freemason laying down the law and Arena three wide. The Gouch coming out and he's going to make it a staying test. Tie the knot on their backs needing a run. Oliver Twist outside him. Vitra Knight then Rebel and Streak in the straight. Showella at the 350 in front but Arena pounce. Arena wanting to duck ends hit the lead. Then Freemason and tie the knots to the outside starting to close. 200 to go. Arena in front tie the knots a length away trying to pick up arena and here comes the big boy he's coming tie the knot with 50 to run arena in front but tie the knot knows where the post is he's too good again nine group ones for tie the knot arena second show a third they were followed by streak getting home well further back in the field was freemason then further out on the track to vitronite they were followed by well back in the field vitronite pulling up very quickly past the post and rebel near the tail tie the knot can't believe that. He's jumped out of the gate. He's landed a length in front. And Di, if he wanted to, could have led. But he took the drop. They've sprinted home 33-46. They have gone at a farcical speed in the early stages. But he has shown immense, immense courage and diverse ability to be able to go up, sit third, back of the speed. They sprinted home 33-46. He's given them two and a half lengths. He's probably got down to nearly 33 seconds himself. And yet he's been too good. Arena's run second. Gauchi did everything right on him. Took off at the right time. He nearly pinched it. And third prize going to number seven, Showella. No excuses for her. She had a beautiful run in front, but she simply wasn't good enough. Well, there's no doubt that he deserved to win this year after losing the race under very controversial circumstances last year. He really has come back in fine order. I don't think they're going to beat him in the Mercedes. Uh, that will just suit him further, the 2,400 metres. And today he was able to sprint so quickly for his last 200 metres. Shane Dye had him beautifully positioned. He scored by a short neck. Again, we head tracks. Yeah, I'm now at Caulfield with Greg Miles. Rod joining us as Civil List comes up in the line now. He's well in the market, Civil List. Now, Brett Pribble dismounts from Married Poor. And in he goes. He's a five-year-old, still a stallion. He uh, contested the Caulfield and Melbourne Cups at big odds and failed to flatter in those races. But as with the, uh, a lot of the imports, he'll obviously have derived a lot of benefit from a, a stay here. Camargo moved up into the stalls, and now El Morada takes his place in the gates. Bronze Roulette linked up. And Carnelian, who likes to lead, has the awkward draw on the outside. And the field is set to go for race five. All clear through. Off they go. No need a little slow, so was Married Poor, Brave Chief and Sedation. First couple to bounce out, away fast too is Episode and Nocro going forward and Carnelian coming across in front of Civil List. Make a scene about middle of the field. When they settled, Brave Chief led them from Nocro, Carnelian working wide and then Sedation easing back to fourth now. A length further back, Episode, another Neptune a length away and they're followed a half length the outside to Civil List. One to make a scene, El Morada. He's out three wide, followed by Spirit of Westbury in the Center and two married poor bronze roulette, a couple of Camargo and no need. Heading to the 700 and the leader Brave Chief three quarters clear. Carnelli in second, knock row a length away, third a length and a half sedation and then episode. One civil list, another Neptune on the rails and then El Morata make a scene in Spirit of Westbury. Two married poor bronze roulette and about three to no need in Camargo. Brave Chief led for home from Carnelli and Civil List making his run round the outside episode goes with him. El Morata just off them, knock row handy and then make a scene and sedation as they corner. Out wider now, episode raced up with knock row, Civil List joining in and then El Morata wider out, Carnelli and down on the inside there are many chances. Wide out now, it's a Civil List episode with El Morata coming at them, knock row and another Neptune. Sedation not far away, Civil List out wide and El Morata from another Neptune diving up on the inside there across the track. 
Civil less, maybe. Civil less out wide. Another Neptune's on the rails. And El Morada wide out. A great finish. Knock row next from Make a Scene. Bronze Roulette Sedation. And then came Carnelian. Just behind them were Married Poor. He hasn't been beaten all that far. Then episode No Need. The weakening Brave Chief was Spirit of Westbury. And a very bad last Camargo. Great finish to this. And the Lobster Cave Plate photo has been called for. Three of them across the track with the civil list in the middle. Another Neptune dived up on the inside. And El Morada on the outside. Number 10's got it, civil list. Number 10, the winner, civil list, Kerry McAvoy. Number 10, civil list, Kay McAvoy takes it out for Peter Hayes. 11 second on the fence, another Neptune, Craig Williams. And one third, El Morada, written by Patrick Payne. It's 10, 11 and 1. He's not every punter's favourite horse, Civil List. He's always promised to do something. He often doesn't deliver. But he really is enjoying the very firm surfaces that he's encountered at his last two starts. And he has raced very well. In and uh, here today, and he really found the line solidly. Yeah, the Sun line, $6.80 for one under. Damien Oliver riding one under. Hasn't been a real happy day for Damien so far. Now they're just about set. We need Satella to move into the gate. And they'll be ready for the running of the Group 1, the 28th of the series of the Coolmore Classic, half million dollar Phillies and Mares race. Zatella, I feel, has moved in. Starter Billy Dale is at his platform, but he's just coming away from the ladder. And there's Lynn Beasley hobbling out the back. Camarina has been pulled out of the gate. I'd suggest Zatella is constituting a delay here. Now she's drawn out in gate number eight. Camarina was drawn in seven inside of her. One under's been pulled out of the gate. And Pace Invader, her Kiwi counterpart, also taken out of the line. So Zatella, in a very cranky and a very dirty mood, going into the gate. The front of the barrier stall has been opened, suggesting that she's become cast up in the stall. Lenny Beasley, who's had a wonderful day with Lord Essex, winning the far lap, Bill Dujour, the Risling. And he's on Zatella, one of the outsiders, at around $30. Sunline edging up towards $4 million in stake earnings. To date, she's won $3.648 million. Now, Beasley coming well away from the gates. The teller at the moment still caught up. She's strung up in the barrier stalls. Zastov has moved in. She stands well. She was placed in the Epsom last year, showing her quality. Staging drawn gate number one. Unlucky not to have won a group one prior to today. Very, very good mare staging. And this is her last season on the racetrack before she heads back to Queensland, to Bow Desert, where she will stand at stud. This race will see her... Her value as a broodmare, which is already very high, skyrocket if she happened to win the Group 1 Classic. Now, we've got news coming through. Yes, Kim? Zatella is out. A late scratching at 3.38. Number 10 has been strung up in the gates of Teller. She's scratched. And there'll be no changes to the market. She was at 25 to 1 and $30 on the Tate. So Zatella will not be running. Disappointing for the connections who would look forward to taking part in this great lineup against these wonderful fillies and mares. But it's not their day today. She's been scratched. And Lynn Beasley with his hands on his hips looks very disappointed. Camarina moves in, Pace Invader comes up. Sunline hasn't moved since being in the gate. 240 for this great champion mare. And one of her real acid tests in her career today. Now they're set. And the lights are on, they're all set for the running of the 2000 edition of the Coolmore Classic. Racing in the Coolmore, Sunline centre of the field out, Anna Lee and Sorrento away well, Stella Marie and Beat the Fade and Camarina began quickly and flickering fire showing speed. It's Beat the Fade in front, Sunline working hard going through Camarina, Stella Marie wide out from flickering fire. Then staging on the inside of Zaztov going up is one under, Anna Lee wide from Sorrento, the grey pace invader. Two lengths to Brief Kiss getting a long way back from Market's Price. Noir Seer and Beauty Bell on the fence at the tail. A thousand metres out. Camarina leads the way. Sunline idled up to be at a flanks the outside. And two lengths. Stella Marie around beat the fade. 
Flickering fire in the centre, one under wide going through. Then staging strung up on the inside around those as Zaztov and Annalise starting a run. Two lengths further back, Pace Invader, Sorrento the outside. Two lengths, Market Price, Brief Kiss. Noir, Sear and Beauty Bell last of all as they come to the bend. 600 metres left to go and it's Camarina in front. Charles is starting to stoke up Sunline coming around the bend. She's only a neck away. One back still, a Marie and Flickering Fire. Beat the fade on the fence. One under comes wide, then Zaztov and Sorrento and staging looking for a run. He released the handbrake on Sunline. He said, let's go, girl. And Sunline at the 250 had raced to the front from Beat the Fade. Camarina, Flickering Fire, Stella Marie. Then one under, but the queen of the turf with the 60 kgs on her back as well. Clear at the 100. Beat the Fade's having another crack at her. Sunline in front. Oh, she's wonderful. All right, Sunline. And she's a mile too good for them. Sunline won the Coolmore from Beat the Fade and Noir Seer from Pace Invader. They were followed by Zaztov and Sorrento. Wide out market price. Then staging Beauty Bell, Stella Marie, one under, always well back with Camarina, flickering fire. Ground, a length and a half, Yuma, Princess, Jet Bell and Is It Gold. Followed by She Starkers, Diamond, Shalas and Pennies has called it a day. Around the turn they swing, 350 metres out, Alluvium in front. I thought she could get beaten, just be proved a mug again by a class galloper. Sunline, far too good. And when you think about it, she had to work hard. Uh, because Camarina went to the front and made her work. She had to come across from a wide alley. And uh, she just still was too good. And when you consider she carried 60 kilos, she was spotting five kilos to a nearest rival, which was staging, six kilos to Camarina, and then more weight to the other. So, uh, and there she is on the outside. She grabbed Camarina quickly. And... Uh, just dashed away. That's beat the fade in the on the inside, battling away in second place. And uh, Noir Seer uh, has got home pretty hard uh, into uh, third place. But uh, just a brilliant win uh, to uh, Sunline. Well, it... Madam Plume, close in it though. Third, third's a photo. Thursday's child is there with Dance the Night Chow Baby on the rails. And a wider out was hit and run. They were trailed further back in the field by Jingle Bells, a gap to Brightside, and then towards the end of Vianetta and Company with Talia. Stand by for the judge's verdict here. Fellowship with Madame Plume squeezing up on the inside. It's a camera. Photo needed to determine this one in 124.89. Fellowship had it won everywhere, but Madame Plume's made a dive. No, it's missed. Number four's got it, Fellowship Craig Williams. Number four scraped in on the outside, Fellowship Craig Williams. Madame Plume's second, Matthew Gatt, was held up for an eternity up the straight. Got the run very late along the inside. And another photo for third, no doubt. 4-11 and another photo for third place. Now where to look here, Thursday's child in the aqua colours in the middle was pretty prominent, Chow Baby's on the inside, hit and run outside him, Dance the Night is there as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, Thursday's child in the middle will get that. Still not uh, semaphored, 4, 11 and a photo. It was a pretty rough old race there, some uh, hard luck stories will come out of it no doubt. A fellowship going straight to the front though and missed uh, any trouble that there was. She's just uh, squeaked in though. Madame Plume looked a certainty beaten. She was held up forever and ever. It's a good run, that. It was her first run since the Oaks, and she posited right up behind them, was absolutely bolting and had nowhere to go, and eventually squeezed through right along the rails, and uh, she's just missed by the barest possible margin. 124.89. As we wait this third number, some news through from Andrew Bensley. The good sprinter theatre uh, has been retired to stud. Uh, it's not known yet whether he'll be going to a start in Australia or New Zealand. He won about 570000 uh, Didn't quite win at Group 1 level, although placed in uh, the Manicato in a Vic Health Cup, also the Australia Stakes. He did win a uh, Group 2 Ascot Vale. So, Theatre, the Rick Orlacey trained sprinter, has been retired to stud, and he'll either go to uh, an Australian or New Zealand stud. That's yet to be determined. So, Rick's lost Reduce Choice and Theatre out of his stable in the past couple of weeks. Uh, both going to stud. Okay, still waiting. Very good support. They're the two money horses late in proceedings. Just waiting on Land Siding, who was a late scratching when he became cast at his debut run back at Gosford. 
And again today, he's very stubborn, not wanting to move into the gate. And King of Acapulco, who's had his barrier worries and woes in recent uh, times, also yet to move in. They swing land siding around and bring him up to the gate, but he says, you're kidding, I'm not going there at this stage. And he's refusing to move in. Last time we saw paint in Sydney, was in, he was runner-up in the Golden Slipper, and some thought very unlucky, and he's been heavily backed here. 320. Bradshaw very firm at the 440 regulations, also 460, and Stan Zake coming in. Very good tip for him. He's into $6.20 now on my TAB board. Star Covet resuming from a long spell. Ruby Tough stood in the gate well. Land siding has moved in. So King of Acapulco to come up. Note that Bradshaw has the black colours, Cerise Cap of the Woodlands. Immigrant carries the number one set, the All Cerise. And now we're ready. 1,100 metres. And Paint is the favourite, 32160. Starter is at his platform. Unless land sighting is playing up, they seem ready. Star Covered and Ruby Tough stood in the gate well. Bit of trouble towards gate three or four. Attendance in there. Now all's ready. This will be it. Bradshaw not quite ready the inside. Straightens up. Starter picks up the button. They're racing. Pleasure give us slow to go with Star Covered after the kick. Paint came out of the machine running, Bradshaw away quickly, Immigrant going fast in regulations, the pink cap not far out. Stanzay caught wide, steadies up in fifth position on the fence, Kid Lad, two lengths, land sighting, Ruby Toff, King of Acapulco, pleasure giver, and Star Covert run off his feet last of all. Paint leads the way. The two stable mates are testing him. Bradshaw the fence and Immigrant wide out. Two lengths away is Kidlad. Inside regulation, Stan Zake next on the outside from King of Acapulco. Land sightings well back as they come to the bend. Ruby Toff on the fence from Pleasure Giver and Star Covert. Around the bend, 4.50 to go. Paint leads the way. Bradshaw on the fence, Immigrant the outside. Then regulations four out with a run from Camarina. Stan Zake and King of Acapulco down the centre. Regulation spreading hard and fast. He's moved up at the 200 metres mark to go to Paint on the fence. Bradshaw and King of Acapulco coming strongly. King of Acapulco after regulations and Bradshaw. King of Acapulco and Bradshaw. King of Acapulco in front of Bradshaw and the King's too good. King of Acapulco has beaten Bradshaw and Stan Zake from land sighting wide out. Then regulations who died on his run with paint. Ruby Toff the fence from Kidlat. Pleasure giver star covet and immigrant stopping quickly last in. Stand by for the numbers but King of Acapulco down on the weights. Gee, he's racing consistently, that horse. And he's done it again. 11.40 and $2.80. This time, Chris Munz aboard, who rode him last time out. Uh, Lynn Beasley, Larry Cassidy, Brian York have all ridden the horse over his career in Sydney since being transferred from the Martin stable at Tamworth. And there was speed up front. He was able to slot in from his wide gate, Chris Munz, and he's finished too well for Bradshaw, who fought on resolutely. Larry Cassidy... And Stan Zake will be third. He seemed to spit the bit coming to the bend, Stan Zake. Lost his position, lost momentum, but he got going again the last little bit with land sighting out wide to finish in third position. The time is 13.98. Bit of compensation for Chrissy Munts. I thought he was a bit unlucky in the two-year-old race earlier today uh, on uh, Fates Gallant, uh, which ran second after racing Greenley, and now he's got... Uh, a bit of compensation out of uh, King of Acapulco at big odds. They're making a good line as uh, we check the m top six in tote betting. Number 14, Voile Dior, now the tote favourite at $6.10. Regal Conspiracy, $6.50. Our Guided Missile, $8. Majestic Avenue, $8.10. Mr Donizetti, $8.60. And our position, $9. Wide market. For race seven, the Whittier handicap over 1,800 metres. Quick look at the Gold Coast before they jump. Number one, Dashing Courier, $2.90. And number two, It's a Gun. The apprentice, um, Terry Hill, is on It's a Gun. It's $1.90, and he is striving for a winning treble. Number four, Krona Walk is $9, and Thorn Alley, 16 $12 for Danawira, and 17 for Bijou de Mer. And the selections from Steve Hawkins, he likes Dashing Courier to beat. It's a gun and Krona walk. Last one about to be loaded into the boxes at Caulfield for race seven as we go back to Greg Miles. Last to move in, our guided missile on the outside next to Evocative and Wild Dior. 
Set to go. Regal Conspiracy down on the inside. All clear. Racing now. A lovely start too. Regal Conspiracy hot taste. Mr. Donizetti jump well with Arabian Magic going forward early. Triumph is on the improve from New Kingston, Rio Del Mar. Vualdior booting up past the middle of the field, wide out towards the front. As they settled down, Triumph took over the running at the 1400. Vualdior quickly moved up second, the outside, a length and a half, Itiati third on the outside of Hot Taste. Rio Del Mar four wide is working forward up the hill and then Mr Donizetti just behind them Regal Conspiracy on the rail and then Arabian Magic a half to New Kingston a length and a half to Prince Standard outside our position one further back in the field then came our guided missile from Doctor's Orders two evocative and Majestic Wish as they ran past a thousand and the West Australian filly had gone to the lead while Dior Triumph is second two lengths away Rio Del Mar who's got up 30 done a little bit of work outside Itiati Hot Taste is fifth a length to Mr Donizetti and then Arabian Magic taking off three wide from Regal Conspiracy. One and a half further back at the 800, then New Kingston and Prince Standard together. Two lengths behind these horses, then Doctor's Orders out three wide around our guided missile in our position. One Majestic Wish and one Evocative. Up the side at the 600 metres, while Dior about a head in front from Triumph and third placing is now held by Diati in the centre. Rio Del Mar around it. Hot taste the rail and then Arabian Magic running on from Mr Donizetti. Regal Conspiracy held up behind them in the red blink is about seventh or eighth to say corner. Vualdior against the rail from Triumph. Arabian Magic very wide out. Mr Donizetti trying to put himself in the picture. Then uh, Rio Del Mar and Regal Conspiracy. Mr Donizetti raced up fast with Arabian Magic to go to the lead together. His Prince Standard and Evocative. Evocative from the back is bursting through with our guided missile. Prince Standard, Evocative and Arabian Magic from our guided missile. But Evocative. Evocative wins at three quarters. A photo for the miners. Arabian Magic, Prince Standard and our position got through on the rail a beauty there just behind them were our guided missile from Val Dior Mr Donizetti and then hot taste regal conspiracy in New Kingston next Rio Del Mar majestic wish it Iati towards the end in company with Triumph and doctor's orders from last at his first try at this ground and he's raced away to win it impressively number four evocative written by Les Beer, trained at Flemington by Steve McKinnon and his third run back in from a spell has blown them out with a terrific finishing burst. Four and a photo, the time is 148.62. Four and a photo, second and third, you've got no idea. I mean, I've got no idea. There's three of them, and uh, it's a real guess. Uh, we had Arabian Magic looking at the finish, fighting it out. Our position's made late ground, and Prince Stan done. They're the three, but Evocative just uh, swallowed them up out wide and he's won it very easily. From outside in for the minus, Prince Standard, Arabian Magic and Our Position. And having a look at the uh, slow-mo, it looks like the five will get second. Here we go now. Number five's got second, Prince Standard, Patrick Payne. Number nine, third, Arabian Magic, Luke Nolan. Four, five and nine. And close up was Our Position, number four. So it's four, five and nine. Uh, number 10 in fourth place, I should say. That was uh, our position. And fifth home was our guided missile. They were coming from everywhere with their finishing bursts, but uh, Evocative then just swept down the outside and he looked very impressive. You can bob up with the winner, can't he? Les Beer. He's the winning rider on Evocative. Uh, number five, Prince Standards, run uh, second. So it's 11.30 and 3.80 for Evocative. $8.70 for Prince Standard. And number nine has run third. That's Arabian Magic. And Arabian Magic is going to pay $3.80. It's a big tip here, Consolidator. One of the best back runners all day. He's coming in on the tote all the time. He's into $5.50 and coming down quickly. Uh, he's been ridden for speed of late. His go is to get back and run on. If there's speed in the race, Di, I would imagine, would go back from the gate. He really is a promising horse. Landolin, very firm, 4.10. Good tip, Regal Touch as well at 5.10. And a bit of a nibble for the top weight, Ultra Smug at 12.50. As the last few move in. Big day racing at Gosford on Tuesday, Race Caller's Day. It's an innovation put on by the uh, Gosford Turf Club. A lot of different race callers will be calling the sky there on that day with 10 races. Kembla Grange Classic Day. Always a terrific day at Kembla Grange on Wednesday. And the night meets at Canterbury on Saturday night. Then we're back here for the Guineas and the Rider next week. Great weeks of racing ahead. Golden Slipper after that. 
And then the big one, the Doncaster and the Derby at Royal Randwick. Now Lanolin about to move in, Pulverise coming up, Simigan moving into the gate. He's into 5.10 Consolidator now. He has really been heavily backed here. $5.10 coming in on the tape from $7 into $5.10 and expected to come in further. Lanolin 4.10, Pulverise at 5.90, Regal Touch 5.20. Consolidator now $5. More support coming for him. Trained by Gay Waterhouse, Shane Dye in the saddle. And it'll be a day Shane will remember after that great performance by Ty the Knot, showing his true versatility, overcoming huge obstacles. Now they're just about right. 2,000 metres for the last. Here's Consolidator moving in. Comes up to the gate, fills the stall. And we're ready for action. The light flashing. $4.90 Consolidator coming in further on the Tate. Heavily backed in the last. And they're ready. Lights bright in fading light. Lanolin favourite, 410 and they're racing. Consolidator away, well out wide on the track. Yellow Roy out of the gate and ridden for speed. Regal Touch began well and so too did Whistler. Lanolin not far away and Shine over three wide, travelling up to be fifth. Zab watch deep and Consolidator out very wide. Die looking to slot in behind them a bit deep. They were followed by losing ground then would have been uh, Zexabeel. Ultra Smugs a long way back with Sim again. They were followed two lengths away by Simonet and Pulverise last of all. On the first bend, Dan Yallaroy went to the front in the old grey beard, led by more than a length on Zabwatch. One away, Whistler. Three quarters, Consolidator trying to get in, one out. A length away is Regal Touch going up on the inside of the stable mate, and a length and a half to Lanolin. Three quarters, Shine over. Two and a half to Sim again on the inside of Zexabeel, then Ultra Smug. Simone and Pulverise last of all, and a good ten lengths away from the leader. They race up towards the thousand mark, and Yallaroy, the front runner, led by more than a length. Second is Zabwatch. Whistler on the back of the speed getting a good camp and three quarters away consolidator he's been heavily backed and he's poised to pounce regal touch a length away inside of him lanolin going up on the fence three quarters shine over two lengths away zexabeel around uh, simigan they were followed by simone ultra smug second last and two lengths to pulverize being hard ridden before the bend 650 out yellowroy in front but he's there under pressure he's leading the way from zab watch on the fence whistler consolidator being niggled out he's on a loose rein regal touch held up in traffic lanolin Track strongly the fence. Three quarters shine over Zexabeel coming wide. Simone well back now. Uh, Simigan as they turn the bend. They were followed by Ultra Smug in the stretch. Yallaroy in front. Lanolin's got the best run you've ever seen in your life. And Regal Touch coming through in the centre. They were followed by Consolidator and down the outside. Shine over. Marshall went for the Persuader and Lanolin in front. Regal Touch. Every strider's getting on terms. Regal Touch leveled up to Lanolin who's got a fight. Lanolin just in front. Regal Touch is kicking. Regal Touch hit the lead from Lanolin. And Regal Touch, too good. One and a half neck to Lanolin. Five away, third consolidator from Shine Over and Ultra Smug. Then came Sim again. They were followed by Whistler, Yallaroy, Simone, well back in the field, Zexabeel. Pulverizer was beaten a thousand metres out and last time, Zab Watch. Thanks, Terry. Big day at Rose Hill Gardens and uh, number 10, Regal Touch, to pay five thirty and uh, two dollars. Dan Beasley, the winning rider. Number five, Lanolin, a dollar ninety consolidator. A place tote of $2. That wraps up racing at Rose Hill Gardens as we...